Lesson 3.1, when lines and planes are parallel. A lot of this is definitions. So until you start playing with these, they may or may not make sense. So starting with parallel lines, we call parallel lines anything that's coplanar. So it's got to be in the same plane. If they're not the same plane, we don't call them parallel lines. Call this line L, call this line N. Let's imagine I drew them a little better. Actually, my computer glitched on me. And I just drew it crummy. This double line indicates they're parallel. So I would say L is parallel to N. That's two lines that don't intersect. And they're in the same plane. Because we have this very bizarre real world application of two lines that never intersect but are not in the same plane. So we have a line coming up, popping out of the middle here, and a line in the back here. Call these A and B. I don't think I've made a script B in a very long time. Since I can't, I'll make a goofy script B. Anyway, we would say A and B. That looks like a K. Somebody help me. I don't know how to make a script B. A and B are skew lines. They're not parallel. Oh, but they never intersect. Doesn't matter, they're in different planes. They're not in the same plane. So they don't intersect, we don't call them that. Parallel planes is something else we could talk about. The best way to consider a room. Standard box drawing. Defy you to do a better job. All right, fine. All you art majors out there, go ahead, laugh at me. Let me give it some labels here. These are the corners, of course. And parallel planes would be like A, B, C, D. So A, B, C, D is parallel to E, F, G, H. We could also use this diagram for the next one. A line and a plane are parallel if they do not intersect. So we would say A, B, C, D is parallel to E, F. These are all the ways we can call things parallel. The bottom line really is we're only going to be mainly focusing on parallel lines in a plane. We're going to be doing a lot of work with those. It pops up on the ACT and a lot of math problems. But you need to know this other stuff. We'll ask sometimes always and never questions. And skew lines is one of those ones that always get you because you forget about them. You know, oh, parallel lines, yeah, they never intersect and they're always coplanar. Well, what about other lines that don't intersect? Skew lines, things like that. This one's hard to draw, so I'll take my best shot at it and then laugh as much as you want. Draw the plane down the middle. And where they intersect. So that's the line of intersection from this point to this point, and then I continue to mount. Now I have to fix this. Yeah, that's actually not too bad. Let's give these some names. 
hopefully something I can draw a script in. Call this X, we'll call this Y. And we'd say the theorem, if two parallel lines are cut by a third plane, planes are cut by a third plane, the lines of intersection are parallel. X is parallel to Y because plane M, plane N, M is parallel to N. There's a proof for this. It's got to be ludicrous. Otherwise, I'd have written it down. You look at something, you think, oh, that's obvious. And this is one of those proofs that doesn't follow what we've done. So rather than confuse you, I've avoided it. Now, we're building up to parallel lines cut by a transversal, but we got to crawl before we walk. So we've got two lines that are clearly not parallel. We just have to get used to all the labels that we give them. And we have to draw tons of numbers in here. This is where you might want to pause the recording and get caught up. And we give them lots of names. So interior angles. Interior angles would be angle 3 and angle 5. Or angle 4 and angle 6. So we have a couple lines with a transversal. Transversal means a line cutting another line. I always look that up and find that funny. And these are my interior angles. It's just what we call them. I'm just establishing some vocabulary here. Exterior angles then of course would be angle 1 and angle 2. And I'm going to get rid of the or, but we usually talk about them in pairs. I'll, I'll put an N in there. Angle 7 and angle 8. Alternate interior angles which have some interesting properties when we get to parallel lines. These would be angle 3 and angle 6. Also angles 4 and angle 5. Same side interior angles would be angle 3 and angle 5 or angle 4 and angle 6. Same side meaning on the same side. Alternate interior meaning alternating from here to here. So again, just got to get used to it. Once you start doing problems, it becomes very clear. Always have your notes handy to refer to make your life a lot easier. Corresponding angles is tough. People don't quite see this, so I will point to them. This is in the upper left corner of this quadrant. This in the upper left corner of these four. So we call them corresponding angles. So there's lots of them. I can move it up here so I don't lose the screen. Angle 1 and angle 5 are corresponding. Angle 2 and angle 6 are corresponding. Angle 3 and angle 7 are corresponding. Angle 4 and angle 8 are corresponding. That's it. I wasn't sure if there was more. So what that means is if I took this whole thing and I picked it up and dropped it down, these angles would fall on top of each other. And again, we'll get back to that in more detail when we do parallel lines. I would recommend re-watching that if you were confused, and I would not be surprised if you were. That's it. We're going to do problems next class, so you don't have to do these now. Good luck.